Greetings. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our, my sermon title for today is To Be is to Be Misunderstood. Following our time together when we meet via Zoom, we will celebrate communion, so I invite you to bring your communion elements with you to that time. I give up. I don't get you people. I can only do what I'm called to do, and it is never enough for you. Can't imagine Jesus having that kind of day. Can you? But here it is. We played the flute, you didn't dance. We wailed, you didn't mourn. I don't get you people. John came neither eating nor drinking, and you called him a demon. I come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of sinners. I can only do what I am called to do. Then dropping a quote from Proverbs, wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Jesus is identifying himself with the personified lady wisdom and naming the truth of Proverbs, your actions will out the real you. You can imagine having an exasperated day, but we never let Son of God Jesus have that kind of day, even though the gospel writers do. Just as surely as your good intentions are oft misinterpreted, so too are mine, the persons next to you, and so too were both Jesus and Paul's. To live in this world, to be, is to be misunderstood. And sooner or later, the misunderstanding will be of a magnitude that real damage is done to a relationship. The misunderstood one comprehends that no matter how much we do, how much we give or save, how far across the aisle we reach, for some, it will never be enough. We cannot satisfy one another's needs. We can never fully know another. Yet we each have the same internal ache to be known, understood, and accepted. After venting his frustration, I see Jesus taking a deep breath regaining his composure, and then lifting a prayer. Thank you, God, for hiding these things from the wise and intelligent and revealing them to infants. The prayer seems to center Jesus and evokes his compassion as he closes with, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Nothing we do will ever be enough to satisfy one another, and nothing we do will ever be enough to dissatisfy the God who calls to us with unrelenting love and mercy. Come to me, you who are weary and find rest. Come to me, you who are burdened by guilt and find forgiveness. Come to me, you who are isolated and find communion. Come to me, you who are saddened and find hope. Come to me is the call of Christ to which we have responded. We gather, albeit virtually, to be changed by God. And yet, as Paul so rightly reminds us, we will do everything we can to resist that change. The power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. 
something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. This is the human condition. It is who we are. Weary, burdened, isolated folk who so very much want to be more, want to be better. Jesus, the lover of God, becomes Jesus the crucified because he is so maligned and misunderstood. Richard Rohr points out the tragedy and paradox of the cross is that this irrational, absurd, and sinful action is redeemed by God who uses it for good. We find our redemption through tragedy, resurrection through death, divinity through humanity. As the misunderstood one gives meaning and rest to each of us who yield our lives to him. Just as with Jesus, our actions will out us. But our salvation, our wholeness, will not come from doing, even if the doing is for the church, because nothing we do will ever be enough. Our wholeness, like Christ's, is in living within the paradox. Can we, in the face of failure and frailty, be compassionate and humble of heart, as was the misunderstood one? In watching the musical Hamilton with these texts on my mind, Alexander Hamilton was surely a misunderstood man who sought to become more and to become whole by doing more and writing more than anyone else. He thought he could write his way out of an affair rather than turning to his wronged wife or to Jesus with the heavy burden he bore. Nevertheless, Jesus is always offering to be our perfect partner, the one who can match step and strength and stamina. Yoked with Christ, we discover an unexpected kindness in our core. Walking with God, we make ourselves vulnerable to one another. Living in the love of God, it matters less if we are judged rightly or not. Walking yoked, joined to Christ, we find our balance, steady our spirits, and receive rest for our weary souls. God is the one in whom we live and move and have our being, not the church. We are not one day going to be in God's presence. We are this day in God's presence. Richard Rohr writes, only when we rest in God can we find the safety, the spaciousness, and the scary freedom to be who we are, all that we are, more than we are, and sometimes even less than we are. We continually dwell in God's presence. What we lack is a God consciousness, an awareness of this presence. We have to get woke and stay woke to see what is already present. Yoked with Jesus, awareness of God, this is what spirituality, contemplative prayer is all about. But the Apostle Paul continues his confessions about struggling with self-control, and then he makes a pivot writing, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints. To live in this world, to be is to be misunderstood. Know when, our live, when that is our lived reality that we travel in good company. We are even then yoked with Christ 
and the Spirit of God is within us, sustaining us. When we take the time to step into the awareness of God's presence, then we can indeed step away from our burdens and find rest for our weary bodies. May it be so, today and always. Amen.